Hi everyone, and welcome to Storytime with the Seatons. We really hope you enjoyed our first story, The Perfect Princess, and now this week we've got a new one for you. It's called Pete's Pests. In an ordinary house, in an ordinary street, lives an ordinary man, let's call him Pete. Travelling to work each day in his little red van, focused on his daily jobs, he's a hard-working man. Delivering packages and parcels, he prefers to work alone. Driving from street to street, just Pete and his phone. Returning home when his hard day's work is done, relaxing on the sofa is now his only fun. Dinner on his lap and watching his favourite shows, scratching his head and picking his nose. Pete doesn't care, no one can see. I can do what I want when it's only me. My sofa's my throne and I'm the king of my castle. No one else making any noise, I'm without any hassle. With a bar and a belch he finishes his drink, then lifts himself up to produce an almighty stink. Proudly smiling he laughs. <laughs> that feels better. Then wipes his mouth on his old green sweater. Day turns to night and Pete starts to feel weary. Clinging on to the remote, his eyes so dreary. Woken suddenly by the neighbour's Labrador. Shaking and startled, he drops the remote to the floor. Stop that barking! Pete shouts, holding his ears. Oh, I hate animals! He cries, wiping away tears. He stomps off to bed, climbing the hard wooden stairs. Stirring and snoring, a sleep full of noisy nightmares. Sun rays beam down onto Pete's round face bringing morning light into his happy, quiet place. Slowly he wakes with a stretch and a yawn, clambering out of bed at the break of dawn. Throwing on some old clothes, he heads downstairs, not a worry in the world, he doesn't care what he wears. Still half asleep, he heads straight to turn on the TV. After, he'll make himself a nice cup of tea. Flinging the door open, he jumps out of his skin. An enormous flapping crow flies straight at him. Squawking and cawing, the bird frantically flaps. Panicking and screaming, Pete ducks into dark gaps. Suddenly he spots a trail of sticky wet bird poo. Oh, I've got to get this beast out, but what can I do? Soaring back and forth, the crow looks distressed. Will you go away, you horrible pest? Swinging and waving, Pete's face turns red. This enormous bird nearly lands on his head, flinging the door open and nearly locking himself out. The squawking crow just flies straight out. Falling to the floor and looking far from impressed. Oh, I hate animals, what a horrible pest. Later that day, Pete returns back home. Oh, now I've got to clean that floor. He starts to moan. Spotting the bird came down the chimney. He sets on blocking it up as quick as can be. Back on the sofa watching his favourite shows, scratching his head and picking his nose. Pete doesn't care, no one can see. I can do what I want when it's only me. Scratching and scraping starts coming from above. Now that's interrupting the programmes I love. Louder and louder the scratching becomes, like a heavy metal band with beating drums. That's coming from upstairs. Pete starts to realise. There's something in my house. He shouts a surprise. Stomping upstairs, he freezes static. It's coming from inside my attic. Cautiously he opens the ceiling trap door. Then immediately it falls to his knees on the floor. As quick as a flash, the critter jumps out. Ah! It's a squirrel! Pete starts to shout, landing on his face before he could blink. You're joking! Not another one! He starts to think. Quickly pushing it down to the ground, this panicking creature starts scurrying around, scratching the carpets and scraping the walls. I don't believe it! An angry Pete roars. Running back and forth, the squirrel looks distressed. Will you go away, you horrible pest? Flinging the door open and nearly knocking himself out, the scratching squirrel just runs straight out, falling to the floor and looking far from impressed. Oh, I hate animals, what a horrible pest! After another hard day's work, Pete climbs out of his van, closing the front door behind him, now is his only plan. Heading inside to rustle up some tea, the outside world locked out, he's as happy as can be. Waiting for his dinner to heat up in the microwave, he opens his back curtains to peek out of his cave. Frozen in shock, he can't believe his eyes. You're joking! Not another one! A poor Pete cries, banging on the windows and shaking his fists. Stop that now! An angry Pete insists. Right there in the garden on the other side of the glass is a lone billy goat grazing on the freshly mown grass. Shouting and waving, he rushes straight out. 
nibbling and chewing, the goat starts to hear him shout. Jumping back and forth, the goat looks in distress. Will you go away, you horrible pest? Flinging the garden gate open, nearly knocking himself out, the grazing goat just jumps straight out. Falling to the floor and looking far from impressed. Oh, I hate animals. What a horrible pest. Late that evening, Pete's putting out his bins. Paper, plastic, cardboard, carrot peelings and banana skins. When he thought he could see something lurk in the shadows. Large round eyes and a long pointy nose. Frozen shock. He couldn't believe his eyes. You're joking. Not another one. A poor Pete cries. Gripping his bags tightly with all his might. Don't you dare! He mutters, not letting the creature out of sight. Before he can react, the crafty fox strikes! I don't believe it! Poor Pete yikes! The fox tears the bags right out of his hands, covered head to toe in rubbish, a sobbing Pete stands. The crafty fox just carries on devouring the mess. Will you go away, you horrible pest? Throwing open his front gate and nearly knock himself out. The fox snatches the last banana skin and runs straight out, falling to the floor and looking far from impressed. Oh, I hate animals. What a horrible pest. In the dead of the night, Pete snores away, dreams full of pests ruining his day. Woken from his sleep from a loud rustling outside, Pete climbs out of bed and opens his curtains out wide. There, digging holes in his beautiful lawn, is an enormous badger right before dawn. Frozen in shock, he can't believe his eyes. You're joking, not another one. A poor Pete cries. Throwing on his old grey dressing gown, he runs straight down. What do you think you're doing? Pete starts to moan. The enormous badger stops and looks up all alone. Bounding back and forth, the badger looks distressed. Will you go away, you horrible pest? Flinging the garden gate open, nearly knocked himself out. The enormous badger just bounds straight out. Falling to the floor, looking far from impressed. Oh, I hate animals. What a horrible pest. Later that day, Pete returns home again. To his shock, not just one pest, there must have been ten. The squawking crow flying here and there. The scratching squirrel dashing everywhere. The crafty fox eating everything in sight. The enormous badger digging left and right. The grazing goat nibbling up the lawn. Pete just stands in silence, looking all forlorn. There's even a mouse, hedgehog and chicken. A pot-belly pig, ferret and pigeon. Pete realises... Maybe, maybe they're all as lonely as me. Perhaps there's something I can do to make our own family. This must be a sign. But what can I do? Aha! He yells. I'll create a petting zoo. So that's what he did. As quick as a flash, from miles around, the people will dash to see creatures and critters all up so close, especially the ones that Pete loves the most. Crow, squirrel, goat, fox and badger all living happily together. In Pete's petting zoo, there'll be one big happy family forever. Now when he hears people sh hear people shout with surprise, you're joking, not another one. With wide open eyes, I know. He replies with a smile so wide. I love animals. Especially by my side. The end. Thank you for listening and really hope you enjoyed Pete's Pests. Follow us on Instagram at, at Storytime the Seatons to keep updated and watch out for any more stories coming up soon. See you soon. Bye bye.